Let us for a few moments sit erect, close the eyes. Let us take our mind inward towards the Divine Spirit shining in our hearts. Let us for the time being keep the mind at the lotus feet of the Divine Lord and pray for the welfare of the whole humanity. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om Sthapakaya Chadarmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Sthapakaya Chadarmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishthay Ramakrishna Yate Nama Asadoma Sad Gamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Asadoma Sad Gamaya Tamaso ma jyote gamaya Mrityor ma mrtang gamaya Om shanti 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 Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions who integrated all the various paths in a harmonious way. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, from death to immortality. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Sri Ramakrishna has given very valuable spiritual instructions to the whole humanity through his talks with Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. We have already studied many points. One thing we should uh, try to understand that we should take up our spiritual life with all seriousness and with all sincerity. Now, what we see ordinarily in the world, people do not know how to distinguish between what is unreal and what is real. It is very clearly explained by the spiritual masters. What is unreal? Anything that is temporary, Anything that is not permanent is called unreal. Let it be anything. The thing that lasts is said to be permanent. So we should clearly bear in mind this important instruction which will help us in many ways to fight all different forces confronting us in our life. We are passing through a state of suffering simply because we have not been able to grasp this vital point that is the permanent and impermanent. We must apply this reasoning to everything that happens in and around us and try to judge accordingly. Whatever that is not permanent, we should not give any importance to that. We must hold on to that which is permanent. So the purpose of this uh, statement is that we should not lose sight of the substance. The substance is permanent. 
the various forms all other details they are all temporary if we take individuals for example we are all here so many forms are here no doubt but in essence we are the same the essence is permanent this form is different and this form is also not permanent constantly it undergoes changes every moment it undergoes changes if you observe closely this creation preservation and destruction all these three aspects are going on simultaneously every moment how many things are being born the same moment how many things are being sustained the same moment how many things are being destroyed that means this creation preservation and destruction all going on every moment so we should try to analyze some of these factors which are very helpful in our life nowadays people are losing faith in religion not because the religion is not able to satisfy them simply because they are not giving any importance to understand what exactly religion is meant people are often carried away by superstitions and bigotedness so they are so much concentrated in the external things of the world which are of temporary nature so much so they give importance to the secular things of the world in the name of secular in the name of secularism they are forgetting totally about the religious and spiritual aspect of the life so the result we are finding in a very disastrous way how it is having its effect since people in general have neglected to understand and practice religion in the proper spirit we find everywhere lot of distortions all sorts of nonsense going on in mahabharata there is a famous episode this happened in the forest when yudhishthira and uh, all his brothers the five pandavas they were in the forest while wandering yudhishthira felt thirsty he wanted to drink water so he told one of his brothers to go and find out if there is any water nearby so one by one the brothers went in search of water no doubt each one found the water a lake but nobody came back with water the person who went he just not returning one two three four all the four gone then you just was wondering what happened to all of them then he himself had to go worrying himself about his brothers not only they didn't bring water they also are not to be seen so that was a puzzle so with great anxiety and worry you just was searching where they might have gone finally he came to the same place where all the brothers had come in search of water he found all of them lying almost dead he was wondered what has happened to them each one is so adventurous so bold and courageous what happened who who, who dares to kill these people so when he was just uh, deeply concentrating this way he heard a voice well 
these uh, your brothers they are in this condition because they did not obey me i had asked them if they could answer my puzzles if they could uh, tell some of the things which i wanted then i would have not taken their life before they enter into water i told them don't enter into water unless you answer these puzzles but they didn't care so this is the result anyway i am warning you also he is telling that why she is telling to yudhishthira dharmaraj he is telling to dharmaraj look you also don't take that uh, step of entering into water without answering the puzzles if you answer all of them five puzzles then all these brothers would be released they would get back into life then you just of us astonished what then he was the his name itself was uh, dharmaraja so his mind was very clear his whole life was based on pure religion he is following perfect path of righteousness so he could answer whatever he had realized through his experience so then uh, the voice asked him you please tell me what are the great puzzles in this world five puzzles you must tell and i must try to explain anyway coming to this point i'm telling only one item the details you can read mahabharat you will very interesting episode it is there dharmaraja tells look one of the greatest puzzles is every day people die every day every moment people are dying but still nobody thinks seriously about it nobody thinks seriously nobody bothers about it nobody thinks that he also he or she also will have to pass through that state today or tomorrow death is inevitable so this is one of the puzzles which dharmaraja said and the voice was very happy to hear it so one brother got life so like that he told four more and all the brothers came back to life anyway my point here is that most of us are not aware of the great significance of the death when death comes we know simply how to cry or do some kind of uh, rituals then over after 12 days we are again back to our same uh, full hardiness never for a moment we try to learn a lesson by seeing things happening around us we see it but we don't learn it that is the greatest uh, blunder we are passing through so if you have the attitude of learning then you will achieve many things in this short life so death is also in a way a master it has something to teach us that means death is inevitable we have to meet with death so we must constantly remember it that should make us more serious about our responsibilities our duties to be done in this life we have come here just to discharge the duties and get back to our original state this is only a temporary phase this is not a permanent state we have come here this is not permanent nobody can stay in this region eternally even though he wants to live upon the nature forces him to get out of the body frame even at the age of 90 he struggles to live on but then nature forces him to get out that means is a temporary so why should we hug on why should we hang on towards the things which are not permanent here in comes the value of reasoning here in comes the importance of spiritual life that we should clearly understand so that's why shri ramakrishna referring to this uh, fact he said 
God laughs on two occasions. One occasion when the physician tells the mother of the patient, "Oh, I will cure this boy. Don't worry." God laughs. Next moment, his life will be taken off, and this fellow is boasting about saving him. that is when death comes nobody can save anybody when it comes it comes you may like it or you may not like it everyone will have to pass through that state it is an experience just as birth is an experience death is also an experience lot of things are there for us to learn experience is given to us to learn experience is the best teacher on another occasion the divine lord laughs that is when the brothers try to divide the land putting a string across the land and telling this part is mine that part is yours when the lord says the whole universe belongs to me these rascals are quarreling for this land this mine that is mine like that anyway the point is how we don't concentrate our attention on the essence of the things but we foolishly behave and lose sight of the spiritual values so the next point which shri ramakrishna emphasized here that the divine experience could not be had through mere scholarly reasoning our reasoning will take only to a certain state only to a certain point it doesn't go beyond that shri ramakrishna stresses that if one has faith and love it matter becomes very easy and he could experience the vision of god by this means so just while trying to explain this uh, value of faith he shri ramakrishna gave the example of uh, how in sri lanka vibhishana and a person walked over the water a man wanted to cross the ocean then vibhishana said it can be done only don't see what is there in the corner of your cloth i will do something i will tie it in the corner of your cloth don't look into that simply walk on you will be crossing the ocean but the moment you become curious and uh, try to open it and uh, see the things then you will sink with this warning he did something in the on the side of the, in the corner of the cloth and he asked him to walk he is just walking on he was amazed after uh, walking through then he suddenly the thought came to uh, what is it that most wonderful thing by which i could walk on water remarkable power it is so he forgot the warning given by vibhishana just he opened it to see what it is inside the corner of the cloth there was uh, a leaf on which it was written rama oh just this just this that moment he sank down because he lost all faith he began to underrate the value of the divine name another example shri ramakrishna gives how hanuman could cross the ocean by just repeating the divine name rama but shri ramachandra himself had to construct bridge to cross the ocean shri ramakrishna is uh, pointing out that it is very necessary for us to develop this uh, faculty of faith and love of course it is uh, very common in our uh, account of hindu tradition in every house we give first priority to god 
there is a shrine and every day the person in charge of the house as soon as he gets up he computes his morning ablutions and goes there and uh, does his uh, devotions so the divine lord is uh, really looking after the whole home that is the conception so everything whatever we eat whatever we drink everything is offered to the lord and he is living god there for all our purposes whenever we go out we go and bow down and we report him i am going out oh lord protect me like that so in all our actions we take god along with us so there is a great significance in that uh, practice somehow we must try to develop love and faith in god when that is accomplished then the matter becomes very easy then the third point which sri ramakrishna said that what we call brahman in the vedas the same sri ramakrishna calls as the mother of the universe divine mother brahman and prakriti what we call shakti in sanskrit shakti whatever the display of power you see in this universe it's all called as shakti there are so many degrees of manifestation of the power but all this power is nothing but the power of brahman himself so brahman and power brahman and shakti purusha and prakriti they are one and the same they are not different they are one and the same that is why shri ramakrishna could realize the impersonal aspect of god first he had realized personal aspect of god mother kali then he realized the non dual aspect of god that is para brahman so ultimately he realized that what he what he realized as mother kali is none other than para brahman that's the beauty so what he first realized as personal god is none other than the impersonal god there is no difference between the two they are one and the same brahman is the the divine the divine in its static condition is called brahman in its dynamic condition it is called shakti that is as creator preserver and destroyer brahman is called the primordial energy kali so like that sri ramakrishna has explained god and his creation how para brahman and the shakti are working incessantly in the creation how they are through everything nothing is being done without the knowledge of this divine parmatman so far we have read i will now i shall continue to read from where i stopped last time then i shall ask for your comments this page 108 brahman and shakti are identical like fire and its power to burn when we talk of fire we automatically mean also its power to burn again the fire's power to burn implies the fire itself if you accept the one you must accept the other brahman alone is addressed as the mother this is because a mother is an object of great love so to give an opportunity for the spiritual seeker to taste the divine bliss this uh, mother aspect is projected one is able to realize god just through love ecstasy of feeling devotion love and faith 
these are the means listen to a song as is a man's meditation so is his feeling of love as is a man's feeling of love so is his gain and faith is the root of all if in the nectar lake of mother kali's feet my mind remains a must of little use or worship oblations or sacrifice what is needed is absorb but that is not true god is a lake of nectar the ocean of immortality he is called the immortal in the vedas sinking in it one does not die but verily transcends death of little use or worship oblations or sacrifice if a man comes to love god he need not trouble himself much about these activities one needs a fan only as long as there is no breeze the fan may be laid aside if the southern breeze blows then what need is there of a fan to vidyasagar shri ramakrishna said the activities that you are engaged in are good it is very good if you can perform them in a selfless spirit renouncing egotism giving up the idea that you are the doer it is because of you all these things are being done don't have that idea through such action one develops love and devotion to god and ultimately realizes him the more you come to love god the less you will be inclined to perform action when the daughter in law is with child her mother in law gives her less work to do as time goes by she is given less and less work when the time of delivery nears she is not allowed to do any work at all lest it should hurt the child or cause difficulty at the time of birth by these philanthropic activities you are really doing good to yourself if you can do them disinterestedly your mind will become pure and you will develop love of god as soon as you have that love you will realize him man cannot really help the world god alone does that he who has created the sun and the moon who has put love for the children in parents hearts endowed noble souls with compassion and holy men and devotees with divine love the man who works for others without any selfish motive really does good to himself there is gold buried in our heart but you are not aware of it yet it is covered with a thin layer of clay once you are aware of it all these activities of yours will lessen after the birth of a child the daughter in law in the family busies herself with it alone everything she does is only for the child her mother in law does not let her do any household duties go forward a woodcutter once entered a forest to gather wood a brahmachari said to him go forward he obeyed the injunction and discovered some sandalwood trees after few days he reflected the holy man asked him to go forward he didn't tell me to stop here so he went forward and found a silver mine after few days he went still farther and discovered a gold mine and next mines of diamonds and precious stones with these he became immensely rich through selfless work love of god grows in the heart then through his grace one realizes him in course of time god can be seen one can talk to him as i am talking to you in silent wonder they all sat listening to the master's words it seemed to them that a goddess of wisdom herself seated on shri ramakrishna's tongue was addressing these words not merely to vidyasagar but to all humanity for its good it was nearly 9 o'clock in the evening the master was about to leave master to vidyasagar with a smile he said the words i have spoken are really superfluous you know all this you simply are not conscious of it there are countless gems in the coffers of varuna but he himself is not aware of them vidyasagar with a smile you may say as you like master 
Oh yes, there are many wealthy people who don't know the names of all their servants and are even unaware of many of the precious things in their houses or laugh. Everybody was delighted with the master's conversation. Again addressing Vidyasagar, the master said with a smile, Please visit the temple garden sometime. I mean the garden of Rasmani. It is a charming place. Vidyasagar said, Oh, of course I shall go. You have so kindly come here to see me. And shall I not return your visit? Master, visit me? Oh, never think of such a thing. Vidyasagar, why sir? Why do you say that? May I ask you to explain? Master smiling. You see, we are like small fishing boats. We can play in small canals and shallow waters and also in big rivers. But you are a ship. You may run aground on the way. All laugh. Vidyasagar remained silent. Sri Ramakrishna said with a laugh, But even a ship can go there at this season. Vidyasagar smiling. Yes, this is the monsoon season, all laugh. Yam said to himself, This is indeed the monsoon season of newly awakened love. At such times, one doesn't care for prestige of, or formalities. Sri Ramakrishna then took leave of Vidyasagar, who with his friends escorted the master to the main gate, leading the way with a lighted candle in his hand. Before leaving the room, the master prayed for the family's welfare, going into an ecstatic mood as he did so. As soon as the master and the devotees reached the gate, they saw an unexpected sight and stood still. In front of them was a bearded gentleman of fair complexion, aged about 36. He wore his clothes like a Bengali, but on his head was a white turban tied after the fashion of the six. No sooner did he see the master than he fell prostrate before him, turban and all. When he stood up, the master said, Who is this, Balaram? Why so late in the evening, Balaram? I have been waiting here a long time, sir. Master, why didn't you come in, Balaram? All were listening to you. I didn't like to disturb you. The master got into the carriage with his companions. Vidyasagar to M softly, Shall I pay the carriage hire? Master Marsh, Oh, don't bother, please. It is taken care of. Vidyasagar and his friends bowed to Sri Ramakrishna and the carriage started for the Kshneshwar. But the little group with the venerable Vidyasagar at their head holding the lighted candle stood at the gate and gazed after the master until he was out of sight. That completes the chapter 3. I shall stop it here. We shall continue the class next Tuesday. So now it's your chance to speak. Whatever you want to say about the spiritual ideas, you are welcome. You can give your idea. Whatever ideas you may give, you may give. You are free to give. Just, it's very good to share. Now the point, now the meditation is a process of constantly thinking one idea. It is not a state of uh, thoughtlessness, but you are referring to that state where there is no thinking at all. That, that is a state of vacuum. But, the, but what our spiritual masters always say, it is not that we should keep the mind in vacuum. What is the object of meditation? That you must be conscious of it. Suppose your object of meditation is a particular divine form. You are repeating the form, at the same time you are trying to visualize that divine form. So, you keep on repeating the name and at the same, at the same time trying to see the form. At one particular point of time, the name merges in the form and you are able to see the form. Consciously or unconsciously, you will be continuously repeating the divine name. The idea behind is that not giving room to any other thought to interfere when you are concentrating and meditating on the Divine Spirit. That's the idea of holding on to one idea that shuts the entry of all other uh, thoughts coming up. But then,
keeping the mind in a vacuum condition that will not uh, serve the purpose why should we keep the mind in a vacuum condition why should we i want to experience the divine uh, parmatman i want to see him i want to talk to him if necessary as sri ram just now said we can talk to him we can i should talk to him i would love to talk to him so i want to establish contact with him if you keep the mind blank then uh, even god also cannot come so mind is a forum it's a it's a it's a place where god god manifests in in a divine form and uh, through the mind we experience that when mind is uh, merged in in that divine form then it becomes samadhi that means uh, you no more desire to have anything else you don't desire to come back why should i come back what for what for see once you see the god once you once your whole heart your whole mind is given to the object of your meditation you love that form very much once you have seen that form you got fulfillment complete fulfillment you have accomplished it and you desire nothing it is just like uh, having full meals after you don't like even to take one grain of uh, food because you feel you are you are full that satisfaction will come to you you won't like to come back to this earth or whatever region it is that uh, that doesn't arise that question doesn't arise that's <coughs> it's a final stop you have realized the truth and you are one with the truth and you are enjoying perpetually that uh, heavenly peace and bliss that's the final uh, result of the meditation of course repeating name itself burns the karma repeating uh, once you are repeating uh, try to start repeating a divine name with full concentration it has got double purpose it purifies your mind it is its work you need not have to worry about that you need not have to worry about purifying your mind that is taken care of by the divine name itself what is needed is you keep on repeating the divine name that's all that will do all its work it will do and it will take you towards realization both the things will be done by the divine name <laughs> cuz uh, very good questions spot first of all see vedanta it is it is based on principles it it uh, speaks out the essence for example each soul is potentially divine so we have to work out the divinity how to get into that state so that is the practice aspect now hinduism consists of the some of the rituals which are spiritually oriented though we may seek worldly comforts doesn't matter you are seeking worldly comforts through god you are praying to god to give those comforts you are not praying to somebody some landlord uh, like that even seeking personal comforts by praying to god hinduism allows because in course of time he will learn because in the beginning though he prays for to get uh, his uh, desired things in finally because every time he keeps on praying to god he develops a kind of uh, loving relationship with him who oh, god has given me this god has given me that let me again pray to him let me again pray to him so in course of time he is more slowly he is uh, becoming more and more inclined towards god and uh, his attention towards the worldly things becomes less and less so god himself uh, provides such opportunities so that the devotee uh, can come towards him more closely and uh, he makes him understand the vainness of the worldly things asking he is asking for how they are all not useful on the other hand they cause misery and all sorts of reactions will be there because he asked god god has given him he wanted it so god given him just to satisfy him just to make him learn through experience then he will learn in course of time that he he, he will never again ask such things further so that is why in hinduism uh, the importance is given to dharma first dharma artha kama moksha four purusharthas first is dharma so you may earn money wonderful you live in the world they will not say you run away from the world you live in the world but follow dharma live in a proper way not in a haphazard way so live in a proper way keeping the mind on god 
give your heart to god and hands and feet for the service of the lord so with that attitude you carry on the work kama means desire so desires you have desires to such an extent the desires should not overpower you the desires should not become more important than god himself so like that you must try to uh, have the desires finally of course the slowly slowly you must uh, cut down the desires cut down the desires so by cutting down the desires finally you will aspire for liberation so that is how hinduism is based on both uh, the ritualistic portion portion and as well as the vedantic principles if you know you are the spirit then you can conquer the misery why should i weep for what for i should weep i am in this body i am weeping for whom is it permanent so like that he begins to discriminate he begins to reason out and comes to the conclusion and regarding the forms sri ramakrishna himself has said god with form is as real as god without form the point here is if you hold on to one particular form you have the experience of that form once you realize that form that form itself will take you to the formless aspect so my point is that why then there is a lot of confusion why uh, the people begin to doubt so many things about uh, different worshiping different forms etc now the point is this here we have to understand clearly whatever form i am trying to practice it let me practice it let me not try to impose on others or uh, uh, let me not become fanatic about that why i am doing this you must also do like this otherwise you don't have salvation that that is wrong that why should i talk until i realize what the truth is what right have i got to talk like that once i realize the truth i will not talk like that a mahatma is a mahatma wherever he is he loves everybody wherever he is so till he reaches that state he has to pass through rigorous discipline in the course of passing through rigorous discipline he has to follow certain rules and disciplines he must follow them that's all not condemning others not disturbing the faith of others not trying to convert others no you follow your path whatever path you find it suitable to you follow it that's what sri ramakrishna said sri ramakrishna himself was the worshipper of mother kali he came to show that idol worship is not uh, idolatry it is he is worshiping the divine for the, the divine supreme brahman itself is uh, being worshiped in the form of mother kali that's what i i told brahman and shakti are one and the same so once he saw the mother kali mother kali herself gave opportunity to sri ramakrishna to realize the non dual aspect so if you study the life and teachings of sri ramakrishna then you should clear all our doubts we need not have to entertain any doubt in this uh, regard that's the thing no no you you can uh, take any form as the veritable manifestation of god himself it depends upon your attitude so once uh, one person approached a mahatma in this story was told by sri ramakrishna himself he said he asked him sir i want to i want to experience god what is to be done so we shall conclude on its all the time chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously with o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy 
How huge then is my assuredness? Who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name? O oh, my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O oh, Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust and the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean, he is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Ah, how I long for the day when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with his desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence. Though it tears my soul ascend, O thou who stealest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou went, thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from the darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere, may all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good betide all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <laughs>